Hello, I'm Lars Marone with Lauren Haley Technologies, and I'm going to speak, be speaking to you today about copper ionization by Aquahort. Our focus is on dealing with waterborne problems. The first and most important thing in any treatment or disinfection process is to know your water. This is done by taking a water analysis and understanding the water analysis. There are several labs that can take this for you and can give you full explanations. After obtaining your water analysis, you should know what the source of your water is. Is it city water? Is it well water? Is it pond water? And what is the consistency of this water? For example, pond water receives rainfall and drainage water. This will change various components of that water and you need to have a full understanding so you know what you're dealing with. Last but not least, the gallons per minute. This is one of the things that I see the most problems with in greenhouses and agriculture. A lot of individuals base their assumption of gallons per minute solely on a flow meter. I do suggest that you have the flow meter calibrated or you do a measurement by filling up a certain volume and timing it you can make sure that the flow meter is giving you an accurate reading. Copper ionization is a tool and application that if used correctly can be very beneficial in eliminating disease, fungus, algae, and bioslime. Copper ionization is created by running a current, a DC current, the same as a battery, flowing between the electrodes in the water stream. Each copper ion released is a free copper as opposed to bound copper. Free copper ions are relatively stable in the water and travel throughout the water system. This gives you an excellent residual on the effects. What does copper ionization do? Copper ionization kills waterborne pathogens, eliminates, reduces the amount of algae, reduces and eliminates biofilm. Copper ionization travels through the water. So therefore, the copper ionization is traveling through the water, through the pipes, through the lines, in the storage tanks, attacking all the hard to get places where bacteria and food sources exist. And always goes all the way to the root system, giving you the full control. There is less need to pretreat water than other applications. However, pH is quite important. When the pH is above 7.2, you start to lose the effects of the copper ionization. It is best to keep it on the acidic side or below 7.0 for full effects. Copper ionization is a plant nutrient, so therefore it's very safe. It's safe for the humans, it's safe for the environment, and it's safe for the plants. There are systems all over the world. Over 500 greenhouses and nurseries use copper ionization at the present time. Copper ionization is also used in agriculture. Post-harvest sanitation for the removal of yeast and mold, elongating the shelf life, in irrigation for the control of pathogens, biofilm, algae. It's also used in spray applications for drift control by putting the positive charge into the spray media and the plants have a negative charge, this reduces the amount of drift. It's used in swimming pools to eliminate or reduce the amount of chlorine. And again, it has a very good removal effect of biofilm and scale. There's two main factors in determining and sizing copper ionization systems. The first, the gallons per minute. The second is the electrical conductivity of the water. The electrical conductivity of the water determines how much copper surface is needed. The lower the electrical conductivity, the more surface required. You might have to go from a rod to a plate type surface. The higher the electrical conductivity, the less surface required. Copper ions are copper atoms stripped of two electrons. In their desire to acquire the missing electrons, Copper ions are easily bond to organic molecule, molecules in the course and damage the cell wall. 
Free copper ions are less vulnerable to degradation in water than chemical oxidizers. They're very valuable in recirculated or pond water. There are several sources of copper. First, there's pure copper. Second, there's copper salts, which are mainly copper sulfate. There's ionized free copper. And there's complex bound copper. There have been several university studies done on copper ionization and its effects. These studies were done with the Aquahort system. The system must be able to provide and produce the desired amount of copper parts per million and maintain that level. Automated controls of copper output, which adjust for the flow in the EC. If you're turning on one hose or five sections, you're going to have a change in the gallons per minute. The EC can be changed by using raw water or using fertilized water or switching back and forth. Also, there's a magnetically treatment that removes the hydrate layers, making the ions more active. In these university studies, we have done studies on Pythium, Phytophthora, Orwinia, Exanmonius, Agrobacteria, Clavobacteria, and Algae. Here is a test which is showing the effects on Ramaron, which is a Phytophthora. Here you can see the results on Exanmonius, Agrobacteria, Clavobacteria, Ralstonia, and Orwinia. These tests were done at two hours, at four hours, and under different amounts of copper, two parts per million and four parts per million. Also, the magnetic treatment has had extensive research. Here we have roses that are treated with ionized water and untreated with ionized water. The longevity of the roses was increased by 15 days just being placed in the vase. Another important factor that we have seen doing this research is the amount of calcium uptake in the plant. With the aquahort and without the aquahort you can see the results. One vegetable that we've done some recent research on is cucumbers. In this research, we've noticed increased yields. We've done this with use of no fungicides. And in testing the water, we found no zoospore counts. And again, the levels were done between three parts per million and six parts per million. Checking the levels in the media, we found out that we had levels of one to two parts per million. Is the ionization safe? Well, first, there's low concentrations that are needed, one to two parts per million, and it has a big window of effectiveness. We have found no plant toxicity, and it is a plant nutrient. The typical aquahort system, the standard aquahort system, is set up to where nutrient water runs through the aquahort. The aquahort then produces the copper ionization. The water is fed to the plants. The remaining water is drained off and sent into a tank for recirculation. And the process is repeated. Here's a diagram of a typical aquahort system. First, there's a control box. In that control box, it is hooked to the flow meter, which reads the gallons per minute, into a magnetic coil. Below the coil, there are four electrodes. These electrodes can vary in size and with the amount of copper bars in them. Again, this depends on if there's low EC, high EC, and the amount of gallons per minute. When we go into low EC situations, sometimes we have to go into a plate type system. Here, you can see a gravity fed system where the water is going through and across the copper plates and then fed through the back of the tank. In closed system or pressure systems, we use tanks. This tank, for example, has 36 square feet of copper and this tank can do 400 gallons per minute. These tanks can be put in succession. Thank you very much.
Again, my name is Lars Marone with Lauren Haley Technologies. I'm the North American agent. My email is aquahort at ctc.net. The office is 980-722-4203. And there is our website, aquahort, aqua-hort.dk. Thank you.